Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy, BD, and welcome back to the Horror Tavern, a one-stop shop for all things horror. So make sure you take a seat, you grab a drink, as we once again explore the limitless cavern of the horror genre. And today we're talking about Crimson Peak 2015. As a lot of you guys may know, I did a poll up on my channel in the community post that I would let you guys vote on which movie you want me to review next. And I'm going to be doing movie reviews based on uh, the percentage that you guys voted on that poll. And I've decided that despite the problems that YouTube has been facing, we're just going to push through. I'm just going to keep making content. Um, you have basically two choices. You have the choice to basically take a long break and not post anything, which... I'm a fiend for reviewing horror stuff and checking it out, so that's not really appealing to me. But pushing through and making content for you guys, I think that's a lot better and it's a lot more fun. So I'm just going to go and roll with that. But either way, today I'm going to be talking about Crimson Peak 2015, which was a movie directed by Guillermo del Toro. And after watching this movie by him, I think that I'm officially a Guillermo del Toro fan because Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark is one of my favorite horror movies that I've ever seen. I gave that one a near perfect, and honestly, I could probably bump it up to a perfect score. I absolutely love that movie. It has everything I was looking for in terms of an adaptation. And this movie is a very good movie. It's a good, very good film. Um, so off rip, I have pretty good praise for this movie. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff in here, like scary ghost effects, there's tension, there's a lot of good acting um, from all the characters. This movie stars Tom Hiddleston, who obviously a lot of you guys know plays Loki and is in a bunch of other roles. He's great in this one. Um, you got some other good actresses and actors in here that are all just coming together to do a good job. So yeah, overall this movie's very good. Let's talk a little bit about the plot and then I'll go into some of the finer details of why I like it. So the plot of this movie basically follows a young girl at first in the opening scene. She is the Harris to basically a fortune that's going to be passed on by her rich father. They live in I think Buffalo, New York. This is like starting off in like 1887 I believe. Um, so the late 1880s and as a young girl, she's the daughter of this very successful businessman, and she ends up getting visited one late night by her mother's ghost. And her mother appears in this all black draped gown. It's got this like smoky effect to the ghost, and it's like a pure like skeleton skull face. Very creepy, very haunting. The ghost shows up and basically warns her daughter that you have to beware of Crimson Peak. And this has been a monumental moment in the daughter's life because you now cut to, I believe, 14 years later. It's now 1901, the beginning of the 1900s. Everyone's in that old school wardrobe. It's, <coughs> excuse me, back in the day of the classic era. And this moment has basically influenced Edith because ever since then, she's become a famous author. And she loves writing about ghosts. She loves writing about, like, more sadder kind of despair like plots and she deals with some problems of course she's a female it's the 1900s the early 1900s she wants to be a published author she doesn't want to be put into the rope of having to make romance novels and all this stuff she wants to make ghost stories she wants to make different types of tales and stand out for that so she has some back and forth there and you see her father extremely rich guy he's got a bunch of butlers he's a very famous businessman you know he runs a whole operation and then one day a uh baron from i think england or yeah from england i think shows up and uh his name is sir thomas sharp and it's played by tom hiddleston so tom hiddleston plays thomas sharp and this one, this baron, this royalty guy shows up and he basically pitches or tries to pitch to Edith's father, the businessman, that, hey, I made this invention. I'm an inventor. I make a bunch of different inventions and innovations. I got this invention that can help basically pump, I think, like, it, he uses it to pump clay from his country out of, like, mines and stuff. Um, so... He's trying to sell this contraption to get bought and used by um, her father. But her father right away thinks that there's something off about uh, Sir Thomas Sharp and his sister who he brings along. He Something about it. He doesn't like his character. He thinks it's a bit fishy. At first you think it might be like he thinks he's like a snake oil salesman. But then you're kind of led to believe it might be something even more than that. 
and Edith ends up actually having a crush on Sir Thomas Sharp. Um, she ends up getting into a bit of a romance. She ends up falling in love with him. He basically loses her, and then her father tries to intervene um, and has some information dug up about uh, Sir Thomas, and when this information is brought up, he presents it to uh, Thomas and says, hey, um, I'm gonna basically let you get away without any of this information being revealed to my daughter or the businessman, but you have to promise that you're gonna leave New York, go back to England, um, or wherever he lives. He lives out like in a, cla a castle over there, to go back to England, and then you have to basically promise that you're going to break up with my daughter tonight at this big ballroom party event in a dramatic manner, um, and he offers him money as well. So, Sir Thomas, he ends up actually doing it because he has no other choice. He ends up breaking the daughter's heart. Edith is very much devastated and leaves. And you can see that Sir Thomas is basically kind of hesitating his decision. Like he did it based off the father's kind of blackmail. But at the end of the day, you can tell that he might actually genuinely like Edith. And when the um, story continues, you then see her father get murdered in the bathroom by some unknown figure. He gets his he basically gets his shit kicked out of him. He gets his head bashed in to the sink repeatedly until it fucking breaks under the impact and you see a giant gaping hole in his head and they find out that the father is murdered. Edith then decides to get with Thomas because Thomas basically convinces her, you know, I love you. I can't hold it back. Um, your father is the one who convinced me to leave and promised, but, you know, I, I can't abandon you. So she ends up marrying him and they end up moving over to uh, Sir Thomas and his sister's castle out in like the middle of the country field in England um, where they're basically mining this red clay um, and they find out that this place is called Crimson Peak. It's called Crimson Peak because there's a red clay under the castle that basically seeps through the ground as the seasons change. It seeps through the walls and it is really effective as visuals because it makes it look like the ground is bleeding. It makes it look like the castle itself is bleeding. Um, and you get that imagery there. And as um, Edith and Sir Thomas are basically living together in the castle with the sister Lilith, um, Edith starts getting haunted by more ghosts. And she starts getting more paranormal activity. She starts to suspect that there might be more going on at this castle. Maybe there's some mysteries, some secrets. She gets wrapped up in it and she has to figure out a way to escape and a way to solve it. So it's sort of like a murder mystery mixed in with like normal mystery stuff. And it is a gothic romance. It does, you know, have a lot of gothic elements. It takes place in the gothic castle setting back in 1900s. Um, so yeah, this is not what I expected for the movie. I didn't expect it to be as much of a romance. But overall, as that covers the plot, I think that it's a very good movie. Um, first thing first, I love all the actors and actresses in this movie. Again, I think Tom Hiddleston is one of the starring roles in this one. Um, the main character who plays uh, Edith, I think her name is like Mia W. Mia, I can't say her last name. I'm sorry, Mia, but I think it's Mia W. I think. Um, if I'm wrong, apologies. But she does a good job as the main character. She plays that strong female character in a natural way. You kind of feel for her. You understand the time period and what she's going through. And it is a very difficult situation she's thrown into. She's being haunted by ghosts since a kid. She's being told, you know, beware of Crimson Peak. And now she's being visited by the same, if not more, horrific type of ghosts um, in this castle when she's trying to settle down and recover over her father being murdered. She goes through a lot of shit and it's very tragic and you feel for her and she does a good job acting. So shout out to the actress. Um, again, Tom Hiddleston does a great job. Yes, Thomas Sharp. He plays this sort of hero, anti-hero figure, very charismatic. I think Tom Hiddleston is perfect for this type of role because he's got that charm. He's got that European charm in his accent, in his persona, the way he looks. He just embodies the character perfectly. Um, I forgot the name of the actress who plays Lilith, but Lilith, she does a great job. She's Her actress does a great job playing this cold-hearted, very stoic character. That's creepy. You can tell that she's unstable and her level of, I guess, unstableness basically builds up throughout the story and you can see a couple points where she's like breaking and it feels natural one of the best parts about this whole you know movie is again the fact that you got this crimson peak the clay that's bleeding and makes the walls look like it's bleeding the ground looks like it's bleeding and all the ghost effects in the movie are pretty great i would have to say um it's cgi ghost which some of you you know it, it can be wonky at times 
um, in other movies, but in this movie, it's pretty consistent. There's only like a couple of scenes that I was like, mm, but everything else was pretty good. You got obviously Edith's ghost of her mother, this dark, creepy skull-like Grim Reaper figure, which had very creepy scenes in the beginning. And then there's actually a ghost in the castle that she's living in um, that's like a red ghost. It looks like the demon from Insidious. If you know the demon from Insidious, there's a very similar scene in this movie to where Edith is trying to push down the door of this like castle place and, and then the the red ghost that looks like the demon from Insidious is basically smiling and screaming behind the door before it closes shut. Um, and the, the ghost is red because it's covered in the red clay that uh, emerges from the mines under this castle. So you think that the body might have been dumped into some red clay or something or they drowned or something. Um, so that's all very effective. And it's a very creepy, very eerie movie. All the ghosts are terrifying. I mean, the stuff they do, the way they haunt Edith, the way that they emerge from the floorboards and start going crazy like the chick out of the grudge, the way that they stalk behind Edith and look at her. The red ghost, there's a scene in the movie where Edith, I think, is like taking a, a bath, I believe. It's a bath or something. But, and the bathtub is scary too because the red clay mixes with the water. So when you turn it on, it looks like blood's coming out or blood stained water is coming out, which is pretty cool. Um, she's like in the bathroom area and she looks out into the hallway and there's this dark silhouetted woman figure, this tall one who starts contorting and snapping her bones. And you hear her snapping her spine, her neck and her bones as she's like contorting and having a seizure and looking at her from the darkness. And then she goes away and then you see the red ghost and the red ghost has like an ax through her body. At certain points, the, the ghost is carrying a baby and screaming. A lot of horrific shit in this one. And the climax scene is pretty intense to this movie. You get some, a little bit of action. You get some characters clashing, using some weapons, um, trying to kill each other. It's very intense. Um, there's a lot of back-to-back -back stabbings and death and stuff that happens in the climax. So it's pretty impressive. And then you get some final ghost effects involving a character that you are very much connected to and familiar with. And that's very cool. The way that a certain villain is defeated using that ghost stuff as a distraction or as a kind of plot point is very cool very well done um and a uh, one cool effect about it is that character um that character ended up having like wounds in their body like in their nose and their neck so when they turn as a ghost um the they're actually bleeding from the wounds and it's like this red willowish smoke that comes out that consistently comes out like the smoke from a cigarette it's like coming out of their like neck and face and stuff that's very cool i love the fact that the ghosts in the movie are bleeding i love the fact that the ghosts all show off the different wounds and stuff that they have and they embody what they look like before they died um that's all very cool um and there's just a lot of good stuff in this movie the only problem with this movie that i have is the fact that it's extremely long it's like an hour and 50 minutes long almost a two-hour movie you can feel the length at certain points it's got some meandering points and it feels like the movie's getting dragged on. I feel like it could have been cut down. It didn't need to be this long. But regardless, despite it being an hour and 50 plus minute movie, um, overall the pacing is pretty good for what it is. It has a lot of good points in there, has a lot of good character moments. The story is a little bit convoluted. It can get a bit convoluted at points, but if you pay attention, you can kind of keep it close together. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. So 8.4 out of 10. It's a very good movie and I 100% recommend you go check it out. And I I will declare I am a Guillermo del Toro fan. I love scary stories of tell in the dark. An amazing movie. This one's a very good movie. I like his style. And honest to God, if you wanted to do like a darker Goosebumps show, if you wanted to do like a darker Goosebumps show, a Goosebumps spinoff show that's darker, you gotta hire Guillermo del Toro because after seeing Crimson Peak and after seeing Scary Stories of Tell in the Dark, he could do that shit very well. Just give him a story like Dead House or Dark, you know, to make him do a story about Dark Falls or some shit like that. He'll do some crazy wild shit with it. And if you're aiming for a darker version of that Goosebumps stuff, I think you gotta hire this motherfucker. Please get that motherfucker involved because he's a goaded, goaded director at this point. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button. It'd be very much appreciated. And stay tuned for more content to come. Hope you guys have a good day. Deuces.
Yo, man, that 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 actress who plays Lilith, man, I got to find out her name. I got to find out her socials because she was bad as fuck. If you ever seen a woman that's got real life Lady Demistress vibes from Resident Evil or whatever, uh, this chick has got it. She is fucking gorgeous. I mean, and uh, her address will be leaked soon.